Hello friends, welcome to our today's class. Today we'll be talking about the accounting equation in such a manner that uh, we should be in a position to solve all the questions related to the accounting equation after this class, right? So what we will be doing is we'll be talking about a few uh, business transactions which are uh, there on your screen. We'll say that someone has started a business, then paid rent in advance, purchased a mobile, then bought some furniture and some goods, things like that. Means we'll be trying to cover by way of this 10 to 15 illustrations, uh, 10 to 15 transactions in this illustration. We'll try uh, seeing as to how this accounting equation is prepared. If you remember in our earlier, earlier class, we have seen that accounting equation is nothing but an equation wherein on the left side you have the assets and on the right side you have a liability, you have liabilities plus capital. And you need to remember one thing that the total of the assets after each and every transaction should be equal to the total of the right hand side. Right. So the it, this accounting equation is also called as the balance sheet equation. Now, this is the format which we need to prepare. What is there in this format? If you see, on the left side, you have the assets. On the right side, you have the liabilities and capital. And as we've seen that the capital needs to be adjusted with the income and expenditure also. Right. So we'll be trying to solve this question, uh, the illustration by putting the numbers here and we'll see whether uh, the total of my left hand side is equals to the right hand side also. Let's look at the transactions one by one. The first transaction says commenced business with cash 8 lakh rupees. If someone starts a business, what happens to the various assets and liabilities or capital? If you see here, in cash column, I have made these accounts early, uh, prior to this class because I thought it would be a uh, time saving issue for us, right? So in cash, if you see, there is no amount. What I would do is when the owner invests the money in the business, then the cash would go up by 8 lakh rupees, right? So I have mentioned 8 lakh here. So if you look at this, my total of cash after this transaction becomes eight and my total of assets. Here I have kept a formula wherein I have totaled all the assets so that we see if my transactions, uh, if the result of my transactions is as per what we have thought in our accounting equation or not. And again, this eight lakh would increase the capital of this owner. So I would write eight lakh rupees in the capital column. Now, if I see my total on the left hand side after this transaction will be equal to my total on the right hand side after this transaction. Is this clear? What happens is whenever the owner invests money in the business, the cash increases to the extent of 8 lakh rupees. Similarly, the owner's capital would go up to the extent of 8 lakh rupees. Let us have a look at the next transaction. It says paid rent in advance 20,000. Advance rent is an asset for us because we have seen asset means those things wherein the benefit would be derived in future. So what would happen if I pay 20,000 cash as advance rent, then my cash balance would go down by 20,000. I say minus 20,000. And then I go to the advance rent and I would say my advance rent or my asset in form of advance rent has gone up by 20,000. Now, if you look at the uh, total of this uh, asset side on the uh, accounting equation, you will find that the total is 8 lakh rupees and also on the right hand side, there is no change, which means the total on the right hand side is also 8 lakh rupees. Right. So let's look at the next transaction, which says purchased a mobile for 70,000. Then mobile would be an asset for me. So what I would do is I would create one more account with the name mobile. And in this mobile, in transaction number three, I have purchased that mobile and the value of mobile is 70,000. So I have to pay 70,000 out of my pockets. I would say 70,000 cash gone. 
my cash balance is 710000 there is no change in the advance rent my value of mobile which was zero earlier now becomes 70000 again if you look at the total the total on the left hand side is still equal to the total on the right hand side after transaction number three, as I told you that after each and every transaction, the total on both the sides should be equal. Let us look at the next transaction. It says bought from Andrews furniture worth 30,000 on credit. Now furniture for 30,000 on credit, two aspects which would be involved here is the furniture goes up by 30,000 in form of assets. Similarly, the payable amount payable to Andrews would go up by 30,000. So here I would say, since there is no cash involved here, I won't be touching on the cash side, right? My furniture has gone up. Here it is. Transaction number D, yeah. My furniture has gone up by 30,000. So I would say 30,000 furniture value increased. On the same uh, line on the liability side, I would say payment to be made in future to Andrews or li my liabilities have gone up by 30,000. Right? If you see my total on the left hand side, which is 8,30,000, and total on the right hand side is again 8,30,000, which means my transactions have been taken care of in the accounting equation. Then the next transaction says, Bought goods from Sohan for cash 3,50,000. Now, if you have purchased goods from Sohan, which means it is a cash payment. So, 3,50,000 cash has gone down in transaction number E, minus 3,50,000. Similarly, my value of goods or stock would go up by 3,50,000. So, this would take care of all my transactions automatically. My total on the left hand side is 8,30,000 after this transaction and also the total on the right side which remains unchanged is again 30,000. Now let us look at the transaction number F. It says sold goods to Sham for cash 4 lakh costing 3 lakh. Now the goods worth 3 lakh have been sold for 4 lakh. What does that mean? It means your goods have been out for 3 lakh rupees but the cash has gone uh, cash has come into the business for 4 lakh and what happens if you sell the goods worth 3 lakh rupees to 4 lakh uh, your profit increases by 1 lakh and what happens when there is any profit your capital would go up to that extent by 1 lakh rupees right so let us try entering this transaction you received cash 4 lakh rupees so i would say 4 lakh add to cash and my stock has gone down by 3 lakh rupees. Sorry, it is 30,000. It has to be 3 lakh rupees. Yes. Minus 3 lakh. Since the stock has gone out, it would be minus 3 lakh rupees. Now, if you see on my capital side, I need to add 1 lakh rupees. Why? Because there is a profit in this transaction to the tune of 1 lakh. The goods worth 3 lakhs have been sold for 4 lakh rupees. And then if I see my total on the left hand side after this transaction is 9 lakh 30,000 and the total on the right hand side is again 9 lakh 30,000 after this transaction. Right? Next transaction is Purchase goods from Ramesh worth 3 lakh rupees. Whenever a name is mentioned, which means it is a credit transaction. Purchase goods from Ramesh means you have purchased goods from Ramesh to the tune of 3 lakh rupees on credit. So on the liability side, I have one more name with the name Ramesh. So my goods would be increasing by 3 lakh rupees. And the amount payable to Ramesh under the liabilities would again go up by 3 lakh rupees. Now, if you look at the transaction, the total of the transaction after this, uh, sorry, the total on the left hand side after this transaction is 12 lakh 30,000 and the total on the right side is again 12 lakh 30,000. Now, after this transaction, if someone asks you as to what is your cash position, 
Then you will say your cash balance is 760,000 and your advance balance is 20,000. Your mobile balance is 70,000. Your furniture balance is 30,000. Your assets in form of stock is to the tune of 350,000. So the total on the asset side in your balance sheet should be 230,000. Similarly, on the right uh, liabilities side, you would have uh, amount payable to Andrews, amount payable to Ramesh, 30,003 lakh rupees, and your capital balance would be 9 lakh rupees, which would make the total on the liability side to the tune of 12 lakh 30,000. Clear? The next transaction. Sold goods to Sham costing 3 lakh rupees for 5 lakhs. Now, this sale, there is not, no mention about the cash. But there is a mention of the name Sham, which means this again is a credit sale. Whenever you sell something on credit to someone, it becomes your asset in form of receivables or debtors. So on the asset side, I have a column with the name Sham. What happens is the goods have been sold for 3 lakh rupees. I would say minus 3 lakh rupees here. And I would say the amount receivable from Sham. How much was that? It was for 5 lakh rupees. So I would say amount receivable from Sham would be 5 lakhs. Right. Now, if you sell goods worth 3 lakh rupees for rupees 5 lakhs, which means there is a profit of 2 lakhs. And what is the impact of this profit? This profit would increase your capital. So I would say increase in capital by 2 lakhs. Now, again, if you look at the totals of left hand side, it will be 1430 and on the right side, it's again 1430. Then we say purchase furniture and furnishings for rupees 150,000. A sum of 50,000 was paid in cash and the balance through loan. Now you have three transactions, three accounts involved here. One is the cash which is already paid. The remaining amount of 1 lakh rupees is payable in form of loan then your furniture would be increasing by uh, 1,50,000, right? So under the cash column on the left side, where is this transaction? Transaction I. So under I, in the cash, I would say minus 50,000. And my furniture has gone up by 1,50,000. There is a payable amount in form of loan to the tune of 50,000. Now, if you look at my balance sheet equation, it would say the total on the left hand side is 1530 and the total on the right side is 1530. Sorry, there is some error, I think here, 50,000, 150. Yeah, the amount payable here is 1 lakh rupees, sorry. Yeah. So the total on the left hand side is 1530 and the total on the right side is 1530,000 after this transaction I. Transaction J says goods destroyed by 5000 5, worth of cost and 6000 while the sales price. If you remember the conservatism approach, we said that foreseeable losses needs to be accounted for, not the foreseeable gains. So though the sale price is 6,000, but my actual loss is 5,000. So I would be recording only 5,000 rupees in my books of accounts. And how, how I would be showing it? My loss in the stock, my loss in the stock would be 5,000 rupees, which means my stock has gone down by 5,000. Similarly, since it is a loss, my capital would go by down by 5,000 rupees. And if I get this money back from my insurance company, I would be adding it again to the cash and to the capital, which would make my accounting equation equal, right? Then it says, transaction number K says, paid half the amount owed to Andrew's furnitures. How much is payable to Andrew's furnitures? It is 30,000. So I have paid half of that amount, which means 15,000 is to be paid. Now, if I pay 15,000, my cash balance would go down by 15,000. Similarly, my liabilities towards Andrews would again go down by 15,000. Then if I look at my balance sheet, my balance sheet equation would be 15,20,000 on both the sides. Transaction L says, 
paid cash 5000 rupees paid cash 5000 rupees for loan and 3000 rupees for interest now if you have paid cash 5000 for loan and 3000 for interest which means an amount of 8000 has gone down minus 8000 would be your cash outflow of this you have paid 5000 for your loan which means here under loan you would have an amount of minus 5000 and interest has been paid how much is that 3000 rupees so this is an expense for you so you would say minus 3000 here my accounting equation after that would be the same which is 15 lakh 20 thousand see here the total of the uh, both sides after transaction number l is 15 lakh 12 thousand both the sides now transaction number M says withdraw goods for personal use 5000 sale price is 6000 again I would say the goods have gone down by 5000 rupees only the stock here transaction number M right 5000 goods were taken consumed for personal purpose which means stock has gone down by 5000 I would say minus 5000 here and since it reduces your capital in the capital side, you would say your capital has gone down by 5000 due to this transaction. Clear? Then it says received 495,000 from Sham in full settlement. You have received 495,000 from Sham. What is the amount receivable from Sham? It is 5 lakhs. And you say it has been fully settled, which means 5,000 rupees loss is to the to, uh, towards the discount which you have given to Mr. Shyam. So how would we record that? In the cash side, we would say here, I have received 4,95,000. And my receivable from Shyam has gone down by 5 lakhs. Because it says... Full settlement has happened. Now, if you look at the Sham's total, the total of Sham is zero now. And this 5,000 is a loss for you. So this 5,000 would be deducted from your capital. If you look at the total here, this total would be 15 lakh 2,000 on both the sides. Then transaction number O says paid 2 lakh 97,000 to Ramesh in full settlement. Amount payable to Ramesh is 3 lakhs. You paid 297 and then you say there is no pending amount, which means you have received a discount worth 3000. If you have received a discount worth 3000, which means your uh, income has gone up by 3000 rupees. Right? Where it is? to like 97,000 paid. So my cash would, here my cash would go down by to like 97,000. Whereas my payable would be deducted by 3 lakh rupees because I say there is nothing pending now. And again, since there is a gain of 3,000 rupees to me, I would add this 3,000 into my capital. Now, looking at the total on both the sides, it would be 12,5,000. Then you have paid salary 5,000 and 1,000 is outstanding, which means total expense was to the tune of 6,000 rupees. Let me write 6,000 first here. This is an expense for me. Total expense is to the tune of 6,000 of which 1,000 is payable. So I would say on outstanding side, 1,000 is payable. And my cash has gone down by 5,000. So under the cash column, I would say minus 5,000. Clear? My total on both the sides would be 12 lakh rupees. Then I have a transaction called as charge depreciation of 3,000 on furniture and 1,000 on mobile. Which means the value of mobile has gone down by 1,000 if you look at uh, the value of mobile now the value of mobile is 69,000 prior to this 
the value of mobile was 70,000. Similarly, my value of furniture, which was 180,000, has gone down by 3,000 and the amount is 177 now. Since I have recorded this in the accounting equation here, on 1,000 has been deducted from the value of mobile, 1,000 deducted from the value of furniture, and my capital has gone down by 4,000. So now if you look at my balance, it is 11,96,000, right? So this is the manner in which we need to uh, do the accounting equation or entries related accounting equation. And the balance sheet would be prepared with the balances which are highlighted here. The balances which are mentioned, if you look at this, see. This would be the balance. Cash balance is 8,80,000 after all these transactions. Advanced rent is 20,000 after all these transactions. Mobile is worth 69,000. Furniture 177. Stock 50,000. So my total on the asset side would be 11,97,000, 96,000. And the amount payable to Andreas would be 15,000. Ramesh is zero since we have paid everything. Loan amount is uh, 95,000. 1,000 is the amount outstanding. And 10,85,000 is the capital balance. So 11,96,000 is the closing balance of your liabilities. So you would say that the total of assets is equals to the total of liabilities plus capital put together in the balance sheet. So this accounting equation is also called as the balance sheet equation. I hope by solving this question, you would be having a fair idea of what an accounting equation is how the transactions are to be recorded in the accounting equation or how a balance sheet can be prepared after all these transactions, taking the balance of all the accounts which are having a balance, writing them on the asset side and liability side respectively, you'll be finding that the total of balance sheet on both the sides would be the same, right? Thank you so much and bye.